Dalton's Law is the law of partial pressures and it's another important one because of the insight that it gives us into the behavior of gases and because it always turns up on exams. Understanding Dalton's Law is also a prerequisite to understanding Henry's Law, which we'll discuss next. Dalton's Law is pretty simple. It just states that the total air pressure is made up of the partial pressures of the component gases in the air. For example, a typical outdoor air mass at sea level is 21% oxygen. The total pressure is very close to 100 kPa, and the portion of that pressure contributed by oxygen is very close to 21 kPa. Let's go ahead and apply Dalton's Law, PT equals P1 plus P2 plus P to the N, to a typical sea level atmosphere just to see how it works. At sea level, atmospheric pressure is around 101.3 kPa, and the atmosphere consists of roughly 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon. If we simplify and round the atmospheric pressure to 100 kPa, then we can say that the partial pressure of nitrogen is 78 kPa, or the pressure exerted by nitrogen alone is 78 kPa because nitrogen accounts for 78% of the 100 kilopascals of atmospheric pressure. By the same reasoning, the partial pressure of oxygen is 21 kPa, and the partial pressure of argon is 1 kPa. Pretty straightforward, and frankly at this point it's a little difficult to say exactly why anyone would care how much pressure is attributed to nitrogen or oxygen or argon. However, interesting and important things start to happen when people find themselves in environments with especially high or low pressures, or when the mixture of gases is altered. Sometimes we overlook the fact that these are two discrete consequences of Dalton's Law, and that as a result there are two ways that Dalton's Law matters physiologically to us. The first and most frequently discussed consequence of Dalton's Law is that the partial pressure of any gas changes as the total pressure changes. But a second and equally important consequence is that the partial pressure of a specific gas increases or decreases as the percentage of that gas in the total mixture increases or decreases. This second consequence is often ignored but is actually significant in some interesting ways. To illustrate the first point, let's consider the patient in a flight environment, or better yet, let's consider a passenger flight at 30,000 feet that suffers a decompression incident at that altitude. The sea level situation is that atmospheric pressure is 100 kPa. Oxygen at 21% is 21 kPa. Here's another important fact to use in this scenario. The partial pressure of oxygen in the blood at the alveoli where oxygen exchange occurs is something like 10 to 14 kPa. As you might imagine, it's the gradient between the relatively high atmospheric partial pressure at 21 kPa and the relatively lower PaO2 at 14 kPa that helps drive oxygen into the blood. At 30,000 feet, atmospheric pressure is now 30 kPa. So if the total pressure is 30 and oxygen is still about 21% of the atmosphere, then we can calculate that the partial pressure of oxygen at 30,000 feet is about 6.3 kPa. But a body is still a body and the PaO2 is still 10 to 14 kPa. So which direction is oxygen going to move across the alveolar membrane at 30,000 feet? Nope. Actually, the situation is even more dire than that. Recall that the second consequence of Dalton's Law is that the partial pressure varies with the composition of the air mixture. Well, in the lungs, the mixture of gases isn't quite the same as it is just outside the body. We have to consider the CO2 produced by the body, and because of the warm, humid conditions in the lung, we also have to consider the saturated vapor pressure of water at body temperature when we calculate the partial pressures. There is a tool for doing this, it's called the alveolar gas equation, and we may discuss it further in another lesson. But the equation, partial pressure of oxygen roughly equals the fraction of inspired oxygen multiplied by the atmospheric pressure minus the vapor pressure of water minus the partial pressure of CO2 divided by 0.8. It tells us that because the mixture of gases is slightly different in the lungs, the partial pressure of oxygen in the lungs at 30,000 feet is actually PaO2 equals 0.21 times 30 minus 1.85 minus 5.3 kPa divided by 0 0.8 equals 5.9 minus 6.6 .6 equals negative 0 0.7 kPa. Negative. Fortunately, most passenger airliners are pressurized to the equivalent of an altitude of 6 to 8,000 feet 
but now you know why the safety briefing on the airplane states that you should put your own oxygen on first before trying to do anything else. At 30,000 feet, you'll have, at best, three minutes before you become unconscious without supplemental oxygen. So, to recap, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures is important in flight physiology mostly because it tells us that as the ambient air pressure drops, the partial pressure of the components of the air also drop. Oxygen is of special interest. Secondly, it shows us that the partial pressure of a component gas is proportional to the percentage of the mixture that it represents. In flight physiology, because the partial pressure of CO2 and water vapor are relatively constant in the lungs regardless of altitude, the second effect compounds the first, and we can see dramatic changes in the body's ability to acquire atmospheric oxygen.